This lady, you look like a new lady. Do you have any question? Don't be shy. No. <laughs> Thank you so much. No. Lisa, I would like to ask my wife about the karma interactions. Is it with the soul happening or just with the body? How does this karma affect you? There's karma acting on the soul or the body. It's only the body. So has no, nothing to do with it. So is a shakshi. It's just a witness of the whole thing. But because of ego, we identify with the body and we suffer or enjoy the pious, pious or good karmas. Because our identification with it, it's false identification of the Atman with the body that we feel the pains and pleasures of our good or bad karma. Karma has no touch with the soul at all. And only by devotional service you can nullify, is it? The karmas can nullify the karmas? Karmas can be nullified by different processes of yoga. The karmas can be nullified to be destroyed by astanga yoga, gyan yoga, different kinds of yoga. But, 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 but generally it's described that the other forms of yoga besides bhakti yoga, they don't, describe, they don't destroy all the karmas. There's four stages of karmas. There's prabhda karma, which we're suffering. Prabhda karma means we're suffering from right now. There's aparabdha, which is be seen in the next life. And there's kuta and bija, which means seeds, seeds and, and fructified seeds. So there's four stages of karma. And only bhakti destroys all, all four stages. Other processes don't. And let the other processes, gyan yoga, gyan yoga, ashtanga yoga, unless there's some bhakti mixed in there, they can't destroy the karmas. As Krishna himself is personally destroying the karmas. Brahma says this in Brahma Samhita, verse 58 or something like that. Karmani, karma, karmani nirdahati kintu bhakti bhajan. He said, by doing bhakti bhajan, we can destroy all our karmas. It's in Brahma Samhita by Lord Brahma. So all karmas means all four stages of karmas get destroyed by bhakti bhajan. Is that okay? You come to Jiva Mukta, you won't experience any karma. Sorry? You come to Jiva Mukta, you become a pure devotee. You won't experience your karma. You won't identify, you won't, you won't experience your karma. You'll be in bliss. You'll be karma free. Karma free zone. Anand Jeev. Kuvanand. Anan ho jaga. Come in? Yeah, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Ask another so one. In that case, if your karma is even if you are doing the activities, it will not have any effect on you, right? Or you're not buying to the nature. Does it mean then your karma free? Your karma free. Generally, it's, it's, it's described in Vedanta Sutra, when your karmas are finished, you die. You get liberated. You have no more karmas, you get finished. But oftentimes, Krishna keeps the devotee alive to benefit others. When he becomes a jiva mukti, he becomes karma-free, he becomes a premi bhakta. But he, he should die, he should leave his body at that time and go to Vaikuntha, go to Goloka. But he stays longer. So it's because Krishna, because his presence on the earth benefits the world. His darshan, his pavitram, and mangalam, and his teaching, maybe he's giving diction and training disciples. But generally, it's told, it's told, there's a whole section here in Brahma Sutra, Vedanta Sutra, that the karmas are all finished for the liberated soul, and he immediately dies, leaves his body. Don't leave, stay and help others. <laughs> If all your karmas are finished, stay around and help others. But sometimes it's always you can't bear the separation. They just want to die. Krishna, take me out of here. I met many old Babaji's. Many, many old Babaji's were considered very advanced. I said, what is your wish at this time? I want to die. <laughs> Krishna's not letting me die. I said, that's good. <laughs> if we can take your darshan and get your ashravad and get your shiksha and ashrava and touch your feet and put my head at your feet and eat your ma prasad 
Uchishta, your remnants. He said, I'm just Krishna not letting me die. Who, imagine, who in the material world is praying like that? Imagine someone to kneel down in the bed at the end of the day. Oh, Krishna, what? please make me die. No one's saying like that. Let me live eternally. Let me live forever, ever, ever. So the Siddha Mahavas advanced bhaktas, the praying bhaktas advanced bhavas and sannyasis, the Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis, they're, they're Krishna's keeping them around to benefit others. Like Prabhupada, Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, at the end of his life, his body was full of pain and full of suffering. And he was all a bag of bones, his skin and skin and bones. And one doctor, one Vaidya came and visited Prabhupada. And, and Prabhupada wasn't complaining, wasn't crying, wasn't making complaints. He said, an ordinary person with his, with his only bones with skin stretched on, he has so much pain because, there's, because the nerves are, nerves are pr pressing against the bones. He's so skinny, so just the skin and bones. Normal person, oh, it's so painful to be that, be living in a body, of no, no, no fat, no anything. But he's not complaining at all because he's Krishna conscious, pure devotee. He is speaking Bhagavatam. He's translating Bhagavatam at the end of his life. He's speaking Harikata in the last days of his life. So. And so when, at that time, in those last days, the devotee said, Prabhupada, your, your, your disappearance, Leela, is really causing us a lot of pain. We want you to stay. So can you stay? So, Krishna, so Prabhupada said, you want me to stay? And he said, yes, yeah, okay, I'll stay. So that was like he stayed out of three months or something like that. Jai Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.